many people these days, you probably have at least one camera which is used to document pleasant, though not spectacular, events. But what if you had to come up with a list of dream shots, pictures you wished you'd get a chance to take? What would be on that list? Well, a new book by Cleveland Photographic Society member David Bush and several dozen of his shutterbug friends gives answers to that question. Here's a close-up on David Bush's digital photography bucket list, 100 great digital photos you must take before you die. We wanted uh, each of the pictures to be a defining moment. If it's a, if it's a picture of a person, not just you know, a child, but an important moment in a child's life. If it's a sports picture, not just a picture of the second string guy going in for a layup. We want maybe a picture of a winning score or a winning touchdown. And so th that was our main criterion, is to have uh, uh, you know, defining moments. The book is, is indicative of the way we approach photography as a club. We try to look at all aspects of it and try to encourage people to think outside the box, shoot in styles that are not necessarily their first choice, and learn and continue to grow. I'd always wanted to do a book uh, that showed a bunch of different uh, photographs and how they were taken over a broad range. And then in 2007, the movie came out. Uh, and you know, called the bucket list, and then it really, it really hit home that uh, I started thinking about, you know, as long as I've been taking pictures, there was still quite a long list of pictures that, that I had wanted to take. Uh, everybody, uh, when you're interviewing a musician, you ask, well, who are your influences? And it's not asked of photographers as much, but photographers have influences too. And as you're going along taking pictures, you're compiling a mental list, uh, a to-do list or a bucket list of uh, pictures that you really want to take. You've seen a picture by you know, a, a famous photographer and you think, gosh, I want to do something not exactly like that, but you know, in, that, in that vein. The longer you're in photography, the more you try to do, uh, seek uh, new, new subjects so that you don't uh, just continue to shoot the same thing over time. Uh, and a lot of us do have specific things that say, you know, I do want to be able to get this shot. And a lot of times they're the standard shot that everyone else already has, but you don't have one, so you have to have one of those. You have to have the, the bee on the cone flower. You have to have the Grand Canyon. You have to have a variety of those kind of things that are more the standard, uh, uh, the standard repertory of, uh, of photography, but you feel like you're missing something if you don't have your own. A lot of times, photographers, as I mentioned before, would uh, would will get into a little bit of a rut. Uh, you'll you'll start to concentrate on one aspect of photography that really really interests you. And one of the things about this book is to remind people that there are a variety of topics to shoot. And after you've been at it for a while, you tend to fall into a little bit of a rut. And this idea, the idea behind this book is to remind people that there are a variety of topics to shoot. And then not only to inspire them to do that, but then to give them some of the technical expertise in order to be able to do that. The book is formatted not such that you just see the picture, but that you hear the story behind the picture and you learn some of the technical details and even some of the post-processing that was done in order to create that picture. And the idea isn't necessarily to go out and create that exact same picture, but to inspire you to shoot in all of the different genres and the, uh, uh, and the subjects that are, uh, that are listed in the book. Digital photography has really helped a lot of people who have been longtime photographers get back into it, people who are interested in photography and thought it might be you know, too difficult to get into it because it's easy. And then people who would take pictures no matter what uh, take even better pictures because they have additional tools available with digital cameras. This made it more accessible to people. It's, uh, the cameras have become smarter. Uh, they've become lighter in weight. You don't have to carry around a whole lot of bulky equipment if you don't want to. And uh, everybody can be a photographer. The book does encompass a great uh, variety of, of uh, photographic technique, style, and experience. 
Uh, we do have people uh, represented in the book who are still uh, who are not using uh, professional level equipment. Uh, there are people who have uh, what we used to refer to as point and shoot uh, cameras. Uh, they've become a little bit more sophisticated, so we don't use that technology uh, or that terminology nearly as much as we once did. But um, you don't have to have a professional uh, level uh, DSLR in order to be able to to be a good photographer. And we have people who are still learning the craft. And that's one of the things that's great about our club is the fact that you can walk into the, uh, any one of our meetings and you'll hear a variety of conversations going on and you can't tell if you don't know the people what their particular skill level is because we all share a passion for photography and we're all there to learn whether you've been doing it for 50 years or whether you just picked up your very first camera last year and decided to get serious about it. Education is a part of everything that we do as a club. Uh, we run a school of photography, uh, which uh, we've been doing since the 1940s. So we're coming up on uh, almost 90 years, a little over 90 years of, uh, of uh, continuous instruction. Um, but the idea is almost every one of our events has some form of an educational aspect. Uh, our field trips, uh, we have experienced members, we have inexperienced members. Uh, everybody's out shooting in the same environment. When you have a question, we've got somebody there right by your side who can answer your question for you. Uh, our meetings and our events are designed to continue to help people grow in their, in their photography. We solicited our membership and we came up with roughly 2,500 images. Uh, and then the task was to try to whittle those down to 100. And that was not an easy task at all because uh, there were an awful lot of tremendous images that we had to pass by. And a lot of times it just came down to the fact that you know, a, a specific photo was best representative of that particular topic that we were trying to uh, that we were trying to convey. Most of all, the uh, the photographers represented enjoyed sharing their work with other people and having other people uh, see the pictures that they've taken. To learn more about the Cleveland Photographic Society, log on to the Applause homepage at WVIZ.org for a link to the CPS website. And for more on the arts, be sure to join me weekdays at 12 p.m. for Around Noon on your Northeast Ohio NPR station, 90.3 WCPN. Plus, you can catch every episode of Applause on the web by logging on to our homepage at WVIZ.org. Well, that's it for this round of Applause. I'm Dee Perry. See you next week. Production of a plot.